Every day, human beings breathe to survive. We breathe to capture oxygen, which helps us convert food into energy in our cells, and to get rid of carbon dioxide, the waste gas which is formed as this happens. Our pulmonary system, which is comprised of the airway, lungs, and respiratory muscles, pumps these gases in and out of our bodies, and help us dissolve them in and out of our blood. Though the aforementioned process is certainly the primary biological function of the pulmonary system, humans also use breathing to aid in other activities. For example, to help a neighbor lift a heavy object, to speak or sing, or even to smell grandma's homemade cookies. Mmm, chocolate chip, my favorite! <sighs> Today, we are going to focus primarily on breathing for singing. Though it may not seem like it, breathing for singing can sometimes differ greatly from the breathing we use to maintain life. Most vocal pedagogues agree that there are four different methods of breathing for singing. Clavicular, thoracic, abdominal, and balanced breath. Each of these methods can be used to provide breath support for singing. First, we're going to talk about clavicular breathing. When a singer employs this method, there is a pronounced movement of the shoulders, clavicles, and thorax during inhalation. These same structures collapse during exhalation. Let's give it a try. During clavicular breathing, inhalation is induced by a contraction of the diaphragm accompanied by a contraction of the muscles that lift the upper chest and shoulders. These muscles include the sternocleidomastoid muscles, levator scapulae, trapezius, scalenes, and the pectoralis major muscles. Exhalation occurs due to the elastic recoil of the lungs, assisted by gravity pushing down upon the ribcage. During forced exhalation, the internal intercostals might also contract. Clavicular breathing is the method we employ when breathing normally in order to survive. Often this type of breathing allows us to inhale the greatest volume of air into the lungs. Unfortunately, clavicular breathing provides little opportunity to control the breath through muscular antagonism, forcing the larynx to act as a valve to regulate air pressure. This kind of regulation might result in the overly breathy or pressed tone that can be heard in untrained voices. Very few classical singers employ this method of breathing, although it used to be popular for female singers to do so in the time when corsets were in fashion. Golly, I'm glad those days are over. <sighs> <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> Next, we'll examine thoracic breathing. Breathing with this method relies on the contraction of the diaphragm. No, not that diaphragm, along with the external intercostal muscles during inhalation. The expansion is felt in the lower rib cage, centered at the bottom of the sternum. Sometimes this expansion will extend down to the area between the navel and sternum, also known as the epigastrium. Exhalation occurs when the diaphragm is released and the internal intercostals are contracted. In thoracic breathing, the movement differs greatly from clavicular breathing. Instead of the chest rising and expanding, the expansion occurs primarily in the thorax, particularly from ribs 6 through 12. Very little movement takes place in the upper chest, if any at all. Try it out! Watch that thorax expand. This type of breathing offers a great deal of control over breath management through muscular antagonism. Singers stabilize the thorax through contraction of the external and internal intercostals during exhalation, resulting in a great deal of control over the exhaled breath. This type of breathing is useful when singing particularly long phrases. You mean like in bel canto singing? <laughs> yes, yes, just like in bel canto singing. The third breathing method is called abdominal breathing, or perhaps commonly known as belly breathing. In this method, inhalation relies solely upon the contraction of the diaphragm, accompanied by relaxation in one or more pairs of abdominal muscles. The diaphragm descends and presses downward on the abdominal viscera, displacing it and moving the abdominal wall outward. Let's see your abdomen. 
In abdominal breathing, the movement can be seen in different areas of the body, depending on which abdominal muscles are relaxed. If the rectus is relaxed on inhalation, movement occurs in the anterior of the abdomen. If the obliques and transverse muscles are relaxed, expansion is directed more to the sides of the abdomen. If all five muscles are relaxed, expansion occurs equally across the lower abdomen. My, my, are you expecting, or are you just employing the abdominal breath? Women often place the expansion significantly lower in the abdomen than men do, centering it in the pelvic region below the navel. Men tend to center their expansion in the epigastrium. This phenomenon is likely due to the anatomical differences in men and women. <laughs> that darn uterus taking up so much space! Well, you could always have a hysterectomy. In abdominal breathing, exhalation is caused by the contraction of abdominal muscles, which pull in against the viscera, pressing the diaphragm back to its resting position. Because the oblique muscles attach to the exterior thorax, this may allow for muscular antagonism between the obliques and the external intercostals, allowing more control over the breath. Some, but not all, singers are capable of sustaining a degree of diaphragmatic contraction during exhalation. In this case, antagonism would exist between the abdominals and the diaphragm. In the absence of any antagonism, the abdominal muscles would regulate the breath support, pulled in to increase pressure and released to reduce it. That sounds better than doing sit-ups! Well, don't cancel your gym membership just yet. The final method of breathing is called balanced breathing, or as it's sometimes referred to in the singing world, appoggio. Appoggio is derived from the Italian verb appoggiare, to lean on. This technique, which is often used by many classical singers, combines thoracic breathing and abdominal breathing. Inhalation occurs through the contraction of the diaphragm and external intercostals, accompanied by some relaxation in the abdominal musculature. This type of breathing results in an expansion extending around the base of the thorax through the middle to lower abdomen. Exhalation is controlled by the coordinated efforts of the abdominal muscles and the external intercostals, and possibly the diaphragm, which work in gentle antagonism to control the pressure in the air supply. A pajo? Does that come with a red sauce or a white? <laughs> oh, you. In all singing, regardless of which breathing method a singer employs, the goal of breath support is to provide a stable supply of air at the correct pressure for the desired pitch and loudness. As a rule, higher and louder notes require greater breath pressure than lower, quieter ones. Your teacher may suggest multiple exercises to determine which type of breathing works best for you. You may find that certain types of breathing work better for certain situations. Ultimately, this is something you will work through with your singing teacher. So for now, happy singing and happier breathing.